Interest has once again started accumulating on student loans following a three-year-long pandemic-era pause. This means interest rates have returned to what they were before the freeze. Interest began accruing on student debt today, the first day of September. Monthly payments for borrower, borrowers, however, do not resume until next month. Eilat Shuffley joins us now. She is a senior economic policy reporter for Insider. Eilat, tell us, uh, because late last month, the Biden administration launched a new plan to help student borrowers. What's happening today? How is it different from the president's efforts to try and tackle the larger problem of student debt? Yeah, absolutely. So after over three years on pause, interest began accumulating on all federal borrower student loan balances today. So what this means is that if borrowers go into their accounts today, they're going to see that interest rate they had prior to the pause back on their balances, which means their balances will once again start to grow. And borrowers' monthly bills will become due in October at the earliest. Um, so this, you know, this has been a long time coming. Biden has extended the student loan payment pause multiple times during his presidency, but that is now over. Um, and he has announced, you know, a series of efforts to make this transition a bit easier, like his SAVE plan, which is his new income-driven repayment plan that is intended to make all federal borrowers' monthly payments more affordable based on their income. Borrowers can already apply for that. That application is available on studentaid.gov. Um, and in just a month, borrowers will once again have to start making those payments after over three years of that pandemic relief. Well, what should we know about this interest on student loans? Are the rates the same for all borrowers? Right. So it really depends on what type of federal loan you take out. So there are there are different types of loans that you can take out and the interest rate will vary. So whether an undergraduate chooses to take on, um, you know, just a regular federal subsidized or unsubsidized loan, um, there are also options for graduate borrowers and professionals to take on student loans along with parents. So those interest rates vary. They are not all the same across the board. And they also depend on the year that a borrower takes out that loan. Um, so the interest rate will stay the same for the duration of that repayment, but they do vary depending on the type of loan a borrower will choose to take out. Um, so you're, you're throwing out a lot of terms here, uh, direct subsidized loans, direct unsubsidized loans. Uh, just explain for our viewers who maybe put all of this into like the very back of their heads, at least for the last three years, mm -hmm. What are the differences? How do they figure out uh, those differences? And, um, and what options they have if they have difficulty meeting these monthly payments? Yeah, absolutely. So there are two key buckets of federal loans that a borrower can take out. So we have the direct subsidized student loan, and that's a type of loan that an undergraduate borrower can apply for before they go to college, and that's based on financial needs. So this borrower will likely fill out a FAFSA form, and the uh, and the government will give them a loan based on what they can afford. Um, what makes this loan different from unsubsidized loans is that interest will not accrue during uh, while, while the borrower is in school, and there's also a six-month the grace period after the borrower graduates, so they find that they can't afford to make those payments right away, interest won't grow on those loans. Um, on the other side of that, though, you have unsubsidized loans, and this is a loan that's available to essentially all federal borrowers, so undergraduates, graduates, and even parents. Um, but this is not based on financial need, and interest will start accruing right when the loan is dispersed. So that makes these loans a bit more, a bit trickier, a bit more expensive, because even in periods of deferment or forbearance, interest will be accumulating during that time. So, um, you know, a borrower really has to keep an eye on, you know, repayment over the lifetime of that loan. All right, Islet Sheffy, thank you so much for sharing your insight with us. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me.